Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I apologize for the delay. Glad to see all of you who could make it today. This is uh, Monday, October 16th, 2023. And we are beginning our PAB meeting uh, to remind everyone that the meeting is recorded and um, we're going to begin with a roll call. District 1. B. Fitzpatrick, District 1. Uh, District 2, you're truly present. District 3. He's not present. Uh, and we'll go to District 4. John Jake Chambers, District 4. Thank you. Uh, District 5. Renee Stribe, District 5. District 6. Scott Richmond, present. Uh, District 7. Dawn Deshaun Fewer, District 7. Yeah, no. Oh, and uh, I'm sorry, our at large members. Carol White, uh, not present here, and Nigeria Rolling Ford. Nigeria Rolling Ford, present. Thank you all so much. Um, we're going to proceed with the uh, review and approval of the September 18, 2023 meeting minutes. Um, Scott. Um, okay. okay, is there, um, everyone I hope had a chance to review the minutes, having no comments, is there uh, a motion to adopt the minutes? Yes, this is Scott Richmond. I'll make a motion that the Baltimore County uh, accountability board adopt the September 18th, 2023 meeting minutes as presented by coordination manager, Henry Caligari. Second. It's been moved and properly second. Is there, um, ready for the question? All in favor? Aye. Aye. The ayes. Any opposed? Motion is carried. Uh, we're going to move on to our new business and um, discuss the uh, appointment of the child board members. And Henry's gonna provide a little background to that. Thank you, Madam Chair. So I just wanna clarify here, there's sort of two separate trial board appointment issues in front of the board today. Uh, as folks may remember, if you were on the board back in the spring, there were uh, four individuals who were recommended by the nominations committee of the police accountability board and this board voted to appoint them to the trial board roster to put in quotation marks because uh it's not they're not being appointed they weren't being appointed to a specific trial board that they were being appointed for the purposes of really two things number one as the statute requires they were given training by the maryland uh, state police training and standards commission and number two they were made available, therefore, as a result of their training to be selected for specific trial boards. Uh, so today we do have a specific board, which uh, the three individuals whose uh, applications, they already been, they've already been appointed to the trial board roster, but their applications were recirculated in, in uh, advance of this meeting. That is for a November 13th and 14th trial board that is being called by the Maryland Department of Health Police Force. Um, that's a statewide agency. However, the county PAB still retains the right to appoint a civilian for a statewide trial board if the event that led to the complaint and the discipline occurred in, in this case, Baltimore County. I'm just giving that context here because that's sort of strange that we'd be appointing a civilian to the statewide to a statewide agency but likewise if this incident had occurred in frederick county the frederick county pab would be responsible for appointing the civilian member of the trial board um so that's one of the matters that's in front of the committee the second or the, this this uh board rather the second one is that the nominations committee has interviewed several individuals to join that roster uh to receive training and to be able to serve on future trial boards which is good timing because we are getting not any uh, requests for specific dates. We can't move forward with appointing members until there's at least an idea as to when they're gonna be. But the feeling is there will be several more trial boards from statewide agencies that come before this, uh, this board for the appointment of civilians soon. And so uh, in the case of good timing, the 
nominating committee did interview and recommend two members for appointment to the trial board roster, which again, just means they'll receive training. Uh, I believe two of them are actually attendees here today on the WebEx. Uh, Bernadette White and Hollis Albert are both here as attendees. Um, they are both gonna be sent for training uh, at the Police Training and Standards Commission. And just one more, I know I'm throwing a lot out there, but one more side note is that uh, in order to avoid a scenario where a member of a civilian member appointed to a trial board is unable to attend. Uh, could be a medical emergency, could be that uh, particularly if it's, a, if it's a county trial board, the officer and the chief are, are allowed to strike uh, the civilian member and have them replaced by another. They don't have the right to pick that member, but if there's some obvious ethical concern, then similar to jury duty, they can be struck. Uh, we do want, this board should appoint, in my opinion, two uh, civilian alternates who can functionally be there in case, you know, let's say that a strike were to happen or a medical emergency were to occur. That way, the trial board can still proceed without this board having to reconvene for the purposes of selecting another member, uh, but they would be designated as alternates. So again, big picture, two votes today one to appoint members of the roster and one to appoint the specific trial board members. Um, Madam Chair, I know you have indicated your interest in moving to appoint these, the members of the trial board if uh, there's no further discussion. Yes, thank you, Henry. And uh, you have received those uh, redacted copies of the um, applications for those persons and uh, would entertain questions at this time if anyone has any regarding those. Um, uh, again, it's to reiterate uh, part of what Henry said, I think it's uh, we're ahead of the game a bit that we are in a position to do this now and that uh, we'll be ready for this trial board as it is scheduled to convene. So at this time, I will entertain and um, put forward uh, this motion, uh, be it so moved that the Baltimore County Police Accountability Board hereby appoints Wesley Boley to serve as primary civilian member, and Tony Kish to serve as the first alternate uh, civilian member, and Gary Tosadori uh, as the second alternate civilian member on the November 13th and 14th trial board called by the Maryland Department of Health Police. What is the second? Second. It's been properly seconded. <laughs> Uh, is there any discussion? Any objections? All in favor? Please signify by uh, saying yay or yay. Um, yay. 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 <laughs> uh, any opposed? Having no opposition, the is motion is carried that these parties be appointed to Kish to serve as the first alternate. And Gary Tosadori is the second, and that uh, we appoint Wesley Bowie to serve as the primary civilian member to this special board. Thank you so much. Thank you. And so there's the second issue being the appointment of the folks to the roster who were recommended by the nominations committee. Is there a motion? Yes, I would move that the Baltimore County Police Accountability Board. Hereby appoint Bernadette White and James Hollis Albert to serve on the Baltimore County Trial Board roster. Is there a second? Second. Properly moved and seconded that uh, Ms. White and Mr. Hollis serve on the um, be appointed to the to the Trial board uh, roster. Thank you. And we are going to, for this matter, call for a just one favor um, roll call vote. And uh, you can give your opposition or your vote in favor of these members as we call for your for your votes. So we'll start with our district one. Uh, yeah. Uh, I myself, district two. Yes. And district three. Absent. Is absent today. District four. Yes. District five. 
It's a, Renee, but she was. You don't need to do a roll call. You yes. can just sign all in favor of it at this point. We need to. One moment, let's just finish. Uh, district uh, seven. Six, you got to call first. Yes. Okay, district six. Sorry about that. That's right. That's okay. I'm a yay as well. <laughs> Thank you. And um, our at large members, Kara White and um, Nigeria Roland Ford. Yes. Thank you. Uh, majority hadn't voted yes. This motion is hereby carried. At uh, this time, we will open for any public comment. Uh, Madam Chair, I have a new business matter. That's uh, Don. Okay, yes, go right ahead. Um, the Administrative Charging Committee met on October 13th, 2023. We reviewed one investig investigatory file. It was a use of force complaint. The officer that was subject to that complaint was not administratively charged and was exonerated. As of today, we do not have any pending cases and our next meeting is November 3rd, 2023 at 1 p.m. at the Historic Courthouse and WebEx. And Madam Chair, if I may. Just sure. Thank yeah, you. And, and thank you, Don, yeah, um, for including that as well. Um, and just to clarify on the no pending cases, it's not mean there are not pending complaints, but it just means there are no cases that have reached the stage where they're, they have been completed uh, and they are being sent to the ACC for review. There are none before, there are no pending cases for review, right. but there are complaints pending just to, just to be clear for anybody who's watching. Henry. And thank you, Don, for that. We'll make sure that uh, we include a specific line item for uh, such updates in our meetings uh, forthcoming. Thank you so much for that. Now we're entering to public comment. Sure. Madam Chair, one more point here that is not, not on the agenda, but it's sort of under yes. new business. Uh, generally speaking, I did want to just note that um, for next meeting, the as a reminder, the PAB will one of the agenda items will be the review of the annual report, uh, which the drafting committee has been uh, hard to work at, and we're moving forward with getting a draft ready for everybody. That will be circulated to members of the board uh, ahead of time. It will also a uh, draft version. Uh, working on making that available as well to folks in the public so that they can review it before the. November meeting, uh, and then the, again, the final adoption vote will be in December. So the idea would be to have a draft available for discussion um, by the members of this board for November, and then based on the changes, recommended additions, deletions of the board, then there would be a, uh, that next final copy would be circulated before a final vote for adoption in December. Just to give folks an idea is what we're looking at over the next few months. Thank you. Hmm? So anyone uh, via our WebEx audience um, who would like to at this time make any public comment? Yeah, unmute Bianca. Is your mask on at home? Yeah, it's excellent. Yeah, there we go. Unmute her. We have one member of the public who is unmuted, I think can participate here, I believe. Can you hear me? Move. Yes, we can. Okay, good afternoon. Thank you for allowing me to speak today. I just have a few questions in regards to the administrative charging committee. Um, I did try to log on last week, Friday, October 13th, and via phone and WebEx, it stated the meeting was locked. Were you aware of that? We can follow up on that. Uh, the recording will be made um, available hopefully this week, but we'll make sure that there's an availability to hop on the meeting uh, at future ones and see what that was about. Thank you. Um, my second question is, um, what happens if the administrative charging committee makes an error in exonerating an officer? That is a... Uh, Again, a uh, legal and policy question. That's one where I, I recommend review of the uh, the relevant statute. It's not really a specific situation that we can really get into the details of. 
Okay, so do complainants have any appeal rights when it comes to the administrative charging committee? How can one bring forth this complaint to you? So again, I, I would recommend there either a review of the law or a conversation with an attorney since we can't offer legal advice to members of the public. Okay, um, so my third, excuse me, my next question is, I had a complaint go before the administrative charging committee. And one of the things that Joanne wrote in the review was that she was unaware of what my exact complaint was. From what I read on the website, it states that if the ACC is confused about any complaints that they will reach out to the internal affairs investigator. That did not happen. So how can the public have faith in the administrative charging committee if they won't go the extra step in finding out the exact stipulations of a misconduct complaint? We appreciate your comment. We are not able to um, address your comments regarding the ACC's um, actions or steps they did or not take on a matter. We don't have that purview. Okay. Thank um, you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you for your comments. Uh, we don't see any other one open for um, open public meeting comments at this time. So that, with that said, we're going to move on move on to the agenda, um, stating as you have a copy of that our next meeting will be November twentieth, twenty twenty three at twelve noon um, at the same location in one eighteen of the Towson Historic Courthouse. If there is no, there is no further business at this time. So we will stand adjourn. Have a motion to adjourn. Yes, I move to adjourn the Baltimore County Police Accountability Board until November twentieth, twenty twenty three, at twelve o'clock noon. At which time the meeting is will be in room one eighteen of the historic Towson Courthouse and also via WebEx. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Second. There's no objection. Motion is carried. We stand adjourned. Thank you all so much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. And as always, uh, let me know if anyone has any questions about any issues regarding uh, scheduling, compensation issues, anything like that. Uh, shoot me an email, and I'm available to uh, to respond. So. Oh, let me just direct a <laughs> Thank you all. Enjoy the rest of your day. I can tell you. Yeah. Stop. Oh, were they doing that thing upstairs?